Oh God, and then look at, look at that. Oh, the butthole lip is real, look at that. And hello beautiful people, welcome back. So for today's video, if you are relatively new here, I like to do um, a little mini series on my channel called Full Face of Second Impressions, where I go through and I pull products that either I talked about them in a video and I haven't talked about them since, maybe I lost them and I haven't used them again, um, or just otherwise, you know, we never really got to revisit them here on my channel. Some of these things are on the newer side and some of them I did have to shop my stash to go pick something else out because I figured, you know, for bronzer for example, I figured why go in with bronzers that you've seen me use a thousand times when I could pull one out of my collection over there Something we haven't talked about in a long time and we can use that and you know Just kind of play around with the formula see if I like it Do I not like it like what do I really think of it now that my skin has changed or I do my makeup differently or whatever That's pretty much the scope of the video So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pin my hair back and we're gonna get started. All right, so we're good We're all pulled back my hairline is happy and exposed and now we're gonna go ahead and start off with primer I actually don't know if I've used this more than once or twice since I I shot the full face of first impressions which I can link up here and that is from Farsali this is their liquid glass radiance serum to use this it's just a basic dropper and all I'm gonna do is drop it on to the outer portions of my skin and that's just because I do get pretty oily in my t-zone and I don't need something that's like super radiant in this area and then while we wait for that to soak in you can already see it gives a lot of radiance but I do want to give a little bit more mattification to the t-zone and for that I'm gonna go in with the elf matte putty primer and this is a primer I want to say I've also used this one maybe once or twice um, since I used it in my full face new elf which I'll link up here and I'm still going through and testing the matte formula here versus the luminous and then seeing how they compare to the original putty primer so I don't have a ton of thoughts on this other than I do feel like it kind of goes on a little bit thicker than the original putty primer like that one had a little bit more flexibility to it and I don't know if it's just like the mattification nature of this but it does feel a little bit more like stiff when you put it down which I'm not mad at I feel like if anything that'll really help your makeup stay in place because it's not slipping and sliding and now for foundation because I went in I obviously with primers that we're testing and I'm also going to be testing a different powder today I'm gonna go in with a foundation that I know how it works and that is my Urban Decay Stay Naked foundation I'm using this in the shade 11 NN and I am just uh, gonna apply this all over the face with my Fenty Beauty sponge and then we can jump into concealer so the real kicker of this foundation is that on camera right now it looks so unbelievably light and in real life it's almost my exact skin tone if not I mean like maybe a half a shade too light but like like <laughs> definitely not as light as it looks on camera uh, but that's okay because everything always oxidizes on me anyways so I'm not worried about it I think it'll all end up blending together fine but from there we're gonna go in with another elf product this is the elf hydrating camo concealer in the shade fair warm which looks really dark I didn't think about this oh whoopsies Okay, you know what? I think we if I blend it, I can make it work. Also, fun fact, um, the only reason this concealer is in this video is because I lost it. Well, I shouldn't say that I lost it. It rolled off the back of the table and then onto the floor, and I couldn't find it because it wasn't right in front of me, and we all know I'm not gonna go digging on the floor, like, through all the stuff that's down there. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. And so it came time to grab products for today's video and I was like, where is that e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer? And it was down and back and I was like, mm-hmm, now I know why I didn't know where you were. All right, so now that we're looking super Caspery, I actually can't believe how well that blended in with that foundation. I thought I was gonna have an issue with it being a little bit too dark but it actually blended out perfectly. The coverage is really nice. The consistency is beautiful. All right, I'm not mad at this. So from here, we have to go ahead, obviously, and start setting this face down before everything starts to crease. And for that, we are going in with the product, the product that basically made this entire video a thing because I have had so many comments and DMs and questions of, hey, will you try it? Have you tried it? What did you think? Will you revisit that? And that is for none other than the Nakia Joy setting powder. You guys, this stuff, <laughs> so many of you want to know about. But if I recall correctly, even though this was a really nice powder, I was going through a ton of reviews at the time and I believe, I don't know if it was the ABH powder, some other, no, it wasn't that. that. This was way before that. But another powder came out right after this that I ended up falling in love with and I used a ton. So it isn't that I didn't like it. It's just more so that I ended up using other stuff. I'm just gonna take some of it here in the lid. Oh boy, um... <laughs> Looks like a lot of it done did shook it out, but so I'm just gonna take some of this and you guys know how this goes First off I like to set my under eye which I do with a sponge because I got all kinds of creases 
I really like the tone of this powder. Oh my gosh, that color is so nice. And for the rest of my face, I am just lightly buffing it in with my Scott Barn 67 because I don't want these areas to be too aggressively set, but I also want them to be good and prepped for the rest of the powder products to come. So from here, we're going to move on to bronzer. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did have to go into my stash and pull something out. And I figured if we're going to do it, we might as well just really go there. So I grabbed my KKW contour palette, which I purchased so long ago. Like when did these even come out? Two-ish? Maybe, no, a year and a half, two years ago? I'm not even sure. But I grabbed this palette, which I have in the shade light, of course. And for today, I'm going to be going in with this warmer shade right here. And I'm going to go in pretty light-handed because if I recall correctly, these do have a fair amount of pigment to them. Oh yeah, she's definitely got a little bit of warmth to her, but I do like this shade. And you know, I think what I like about this palette is that it does come with a warmer option and a cooler option because some people prefer, you know, one versus the other. Some people like to mix them. Some people use both and they really chisel out their face. Quarantine 15 is in full effect. So we got to bronze up that Dorito Cheeto cupcake like our lives depend on it. Dorito Cheeto cupcake right here. Ugh. Okay, so real quickly, I just want you guys to know, obviously I moved the camera back out and that's just because right now it is so overcast and it's so early, there's no sun and I'm feeling like the bronzer on camera is starting to look a little bit orange. I'm sorry, real quick, editing page here, a little bit orange. I look like an actual damn Cheeto and I don't know why. I did not look like that in real life and this footage is painful. It looks like I just scooped out of an actual Cheeto bag and just like rubbed it all over my face. It just really struck me that I said it's looking a little bit orange. In what world? <laughs> it's looking full on Oompa Loompa ass orange. And that's just not cute. Anyways, um, back to the show. I just had to, I had to. I had to. Editing page is in full what mode? Okay back to the show. Now moving on from there, obviously it is time for blush and for that we are going to be taking the Flower Beauty Pyramids blush and this is in the shade PC1 Rose Glow and I'm going to be applying this with my 420 brush uh, from Beautylish. This was a brush collection that they did and I'm just going to lightly kind of tap over the entire compact. If you pick this up, just be mindful. It is incredibly glowy. Like it's basically a blush and a highlight mixed into one but it is so so beautiful on the skin. You just have to be really mindful of that. And for me, that just means that I lightly kind of tap it over my cheek. I don't go too intense because it will emphasize my texture, but it's just such a beautiful color combo in here, especially when you mix it with that shimmer. It's so beautiful. Now, while this does have really good reviews on Ulta, a lot of people seem to really enjoy it. Something I want to mention, because I did have a few comments from you guys when I used it in uh, Full Face. I want to say it was like New Drugstore. I can link up here. But I got a couple of comments that said, you know, I would be really apprehensive to use that because I feel like it's too much and it would just, no matter how I apply it, I feel like it would emphasize my texture. And for that, I'm going to just show you guys how I like to tone it down when I think that that happens. And I'll go in with my Hourglass um, Ethereal Light. This is just an ambient lighting powder. Or I'll go in with like a setting powder, which I use the Nakia Joy today, something like that. And I just take some of this and buff it over top of that blush and what it does is it not only subdues the shine a little bit but it also helps to um, buff it in with your texture which essentially kind of fills them in and smooths them out and I know that this is something I do a lot on my channel but I don't explain it all the time so if you were wondering why I do it and why it kind of helps what products you can use you know whatever that's kind of why and again just to reiterate you don't have to have this you can use whatever you do have and a lot of people do prefer to use a loose setting powder because they feel like they get a, a better buff into their skin. Um, so it's it's really to whatever you have and what you like to use, what your skin prefers, that sort of thing. But for me, it just makes a really big difference as far as how everything settles into the skin and blends out and it looks so much more like natural versus looking, you know, really stark and harsh. All right, so now it's time for brows and I'm gonna go in with something that I'm pretty sure I haven't used since I tested it out when it was first released. And that is from Benefit. This is their brow styler. And it says that it has a pencil on one end, which is kind of like the longer shape pencil. And then on the other end, I believe it has a powder, right? Yes, it has a little powder that you can use to fill in um, like the, the larger areas of your brow. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna start off by sculpting with the pencil. All right, so I gave myself a nice little light shape and I had to go in with my ColourPop spoolie just to comb everything through the brows. But so far that is just the pencil. And now let's go ahead and grab the brow powder here and lightly kind of fill in just a little bit. 
That rattle, who remembers that? <laughs> <laughs> it's driving me crazy. So it's been a couple of minutes. I just went through and, you know, tried to match up my brows as best I could. I definitely think that uh, there are some good aspects to this, some things that I really like, and uh, there are a few things that I don't. The thing that I like about this is that it does give a more, um, what I would say is like a soft appearance to the brows. Like you have good structure and you're able to really get in there and get precise. But because there is a powder in here, it gives like almost a soft diffused kind of look, which I really like. Things that I really don't like are that noise right there, can't stand that. And um, I also don't like that it doesn't have a spoolie. Obviously, I'm gonna say that about any product that doesn't have a spoolie, but it is something that kind of drives me crazy, just saying. So now it's time for some brow gel, and I pulled my CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow, and I'm using this in the shade 10 Medium. The reason that I pulled this is because I honestly just don't remember talking about it again after I used it. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in a full face new makeup or something like that, like new drugstore. And so far, I actually think it's doing a pretty nice job. It has a good color too it. Um, the only thing that I'm not loving is that the consistency is a little bit on the thicker side for what I would prefer. I feel like when I'm applying it, I do have to kind of run back over top of it and really smooth out the product. All right, so now it's time to move into eyeshadow, and I picked a palette that I'm pretty sure I haven't used on camera since I used it for the first time, so this is like a true blue second impression, and that is from Physicians Formula. This is their Tropical Days Butter Eyeshadow Palette right here. From what I remember, these eyeshadow palettes did have pretty mixed reviews, so it'll be interesting to be able to uh, go in now and kind of play with it after the fact, and I think to lead in, I'm actually going to grab, uh, let's, you know what, let's go ahead and start off with this medium brown shade right here. I think it'll be a good place to start. We can look at pigmentation and all of that and then blend it out. I'm just applying this with my Sigma E40 brush. All right, so just applying the first shade, I can see that uh, it takes a little work to blend it out onto a tacky surface, which obviously I did didn't set my concealer, so maybe that is something to consider, but I'm just going to use a lighter bone color shade in the palette and kind of blend it out. Blending back over top of that after the entire crease has been set down does make a difference, so I think if you are struggling with these, it might be better to go in and set your lid down, whether it's with a translucent powder or one of the bone color shades out of here or something. Just something to give it a, uh, a transition of sorts because it's blending beautifully now, but that first pass with, uh, with nothing underneath was a little bit rough. And then from there, I'm going to grab this darker tone brown right here, still a matte shade, just to deepen up the outer V a little bit more. I actually really love the tone of this brown and how well it's blending in with those other colors. Like, those three together create a really beautiful, like, natural toned gradient. I really like that. So really quickly, I'm gonna stop here with the matte shades because I also pulled a single shadow that I haven't played with in a long time, and I don't know if I ever revisited it from like a year or so ago when I talked about it on camera, and that would be these little guys from L'Oreal. This is their Crushed Foil Metallic Eyeshadow, and this is in the shade 21 Gilded Gold. Oh, and it looks so good. Oh my gosh, that feels amazing. <sighs> First thing I'm gonna do, per usual, is grab my NYX glitter glue here, and we're gonna pop this all over my mobile lid, and we're gonna go in and pop that L'Oreal shade basically all over where we just put the, uh, the glitter glue and we're just gonna blend it into those brown tones a little bit. On the back side right here where that brown matte meets that L'Oreal shade, I wanna take some of this, which is very chunky. It's this shade out of the palette right here. But it has a really beautiful like glimmer to it. I think this will be like the perfect blending shade to make all of this kind of work together. Oh, that's pretty. My only question with this color is why is it so chunky? <laughs> like on when you when you go in here to work with it, it has so much texture. And then when I go to put it on the eye, I feel like it's gonna flake all over the place. Definitely getting like glitter chunk kind of fallout underneath the eye. It doesn't seem like the other shades in this palette look like that. It's just this one. So maybe it's meant to be more of like their version of a metallic or something. All right, so right there I think is where I'm gonna stop with the eyeshadow because I love that color combination. And I know if I keep letting myself touch things, I'm just going to wreck it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there and move on to some sprays and start setting down the face. And for that, we're going to grab this little guy first from CoverGirl. This is their Outlast Active Cooling Setting Mist for all day wear. Oh yes, I remember you. The smell isn't bad, but the spray is not my favorite. It's very pointed, like, can you see that? All right, so I'm gonna put this in front of this box right here so you can hopefully see the spray. Look at the, the mister as it comes out. Do you see how, like, that is? 
it's like we're just shooting headfirst into the unknown like Superman when we just dive that's the spray moving on from that we're gonna talk highlight even though we are pretty glowy on the face region from the blush um, I do want to add a little bit over top of that because it's just who I am it's what I do and for that we're going to grab the Natasha Denona this is their all over glow face and body shimmer powder and I'm just gonna apply this with the elf jelly pop stipple like I have been lately and I remember back when I used this like obviously it's a fine highlight let's see this like if you wanted to take it all over the body and actually use that aspect of it I could see this being really nice whether you're someone that wants to glow up like your shoulders or your collarbones or that sort of thing I could see this being really pretty for that and it does have a nice like fine consistency so I think it would look really pretty all right and then really quickly I have another setting spray that we're going to test out this one is from Koki Cosmetics it is their refresh hydrating setting spray long lasting hydrating setting spray <laughs> mind you don't forget that part oh that that spray is much better see how much better that is how much like wider the base is all right let's go ahead and give that one a try I definitely had a better experience with that than I did my CoverGirl spray, so that's good. Um, I'm just going in really quickly and kind of pressing everything that I can in um, with my sponge really quickly because I'm noticing like around my nose, everything's looking a little bit funky and I'm not sure why. Hold on, let me grab, I think I want to grab a powder and try to fix it. I'm going to go in with this powder right here. This is my Rimmel um, Stay Matte Powder. I'm just going to try and like buff this in and see if maybe I can get some of that texture to go away. And then we're gonna cheat a little bit more and grab my Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. So I definitely think that that helped a little bit, but for sure, this area of my face right now is having a struggling moment. Uh, but for right now, I think that we curved it. Next up, we're gonna go in with mascara, and for that, I'm gonna use the Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. But before that, I'm gonna go ahead here and curl my lashes with my Tarte Lash Curler here. And I remember when I used this before, I wasn't a huge fan of the lackluster that I got for my lashes. I'm also gonna go ahead and mix it with a little bit of the CoverGirl Uncensored Mascara. So I'm gonna go in first and do a coat of the Maybelline. And after that, I'm gonna go in and add a coat of the CoverGirl Mascara. And really quickly, I wanna grab some eyeliner as well. So I'm gonna grab my L'Oreal Age Perfect Black Eyeliner, and I'm gonna run that on the upper waterline. On the lower lash line, I'm gonna grab the Marc Jacobs eyeliner. This is in the shade Iced. And all right, that brings us down to our final product. And for that, we have this little guy here from Stila. This is their Shine Fever Lip Vinyl. And I have this in the shade Hot Rod, which is a nude brown. Okay, so I definitely remember the color of this being something I was not a fan of because just as I apply it, it's a very, very cool tone brown, which I love a good nude brown. You guys know 90% of what I wear is a nude brown type color. Like it's somewhere on that side of the color wheel. And this one, for whatever whatever reason it just sits really bad with me like it's a mixture of a cool tone brown and like baby shit green and I'm just I'm not I'm not a big fan of it god and then look at look at that oh the butthole lip is real look at that All right, so really quickly I'm gonna try this a different way just to see if I'd be able to get any use out of it. Because again, like the, the quality of the product itself doesn't seem all that bad, but like I just can't get down with that color. What I'm gonna do instead is mix it with something else. I have my KKW lip liner in nude one. Yeah, I think this will work. Um, I'm gonna take this and just lightly line my lips. Then I'm also going to fill my lips in with this lip pencil as well. Then with that base down, I'm gonna throw a little bit of the Stila on top. Just a little bit, not too much. And then see if I can just blend it out and keep it in the center of the lip. And I think that that right there helped quite a bit. Like, yes, you do lose the like super shiny vinyl aspect of it, but at least it's a way that I could make this work for me in a way that I could still um, you know, utilize it without wasting it because those two mixed together are really pretty. Like the, the warmth from the lip liner really does kind of bring back the cool aspect of this and it creates a really pretty lip look. I like that. And all right, you guys, that is the full face all completed. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm gonna go ahead and of course throw up an up close so you guys can see how things are looking up close really quickly. Um, for myself personally, I think everything for the most part went pretty good. I'm actually a big fan of the way that the lip combination worked out. I think that this is a way that I would wear it and I, I would really actually enjoy it. The, uh, the eyeshadows are really nice. I do struggle a little bit with the consistency 
on the Physicians Formula ones because some of them are really nice and they're super blendable. They do have a little bit more of like a kick, a powdery type feeling, but overall very nice in consistency. Um, but again, some of them are a little bit different. So maybe that's like the palette I have or not. I'm not really sure. Um, the L'Oreal shades performed really nicely. The two mascaras built up together really well. That combination I would probably use again. It's still not my favorite, but it is something that I could use on a day by day and, and get by and, and uh, be able to use up the tubes. The brow powder like product stick thing, that's actually really growing on me right now because I feel like the brows themselves have that beautiful like diffuse look. So that I'll definitely use again and, and keep kind of getting a feel for it. Um, the only thing that I really struggled with, like I mentioned before, is just the complexion around my mouth. And that could just be an issue with the mixture of products. I'm not really sure. But that's pretty much it for me, you guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you still like these videos? Do you want to see more? You guys know the drill. Leave me all your thoughts down below. Um, if you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram and on Twitter, you can do that down in the description box. They will both be listed for you. But above all else, if you haven't subscribed, please be sure to do that before you go. I'd love it if you'd stick around. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old Northern Michigan. So subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! So I might have overbronzed my Doritos, my Cheetos, and my cupcakes just a little, little bit. <laughs> my bad. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to prom bronzer. The songs are in my head. You don't need to hear them. They're copyrighted. But I'll give you a hint. One, two, three, four, five. Everybody in the car. So come on, let's drive to the liquor store around the corner. <laughs> that's not a hint, that's the song. <laughs> nice try, Paige. I hope that you are ready for a full face of second impression. Sorry, you're gonna have to just step out of the way and follow my brows because they have an executive meeting to get to. Like, who is she? I don't know. In today's video, we are going to be diving into a full face of second impressions. Mm.